Welcome back. Uh, this is K24 this morning. And like we told you a while back on Interactive, we spoke about what is going to be the tallest building in sub-Saharan Africa, 88 Nairobi. And very many people were really excited about it. When is it coming up? What's it going to look like inside? And you told guys, relax, relax. When it is done, be the first to go inside there and bring you, uh, you know, a, a full exclusive of what's happening there. But you're going to do one better. As they finish construction on that, we have uh, the man behind that particular project steering it to completion and making sure it's going to live up to its billing, Mr. Arnold. Kale, the CEO of Lordship Africa. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Welcome Thanks to the show. Me. Thank you very much. Uh, from New York to Nairobi. Yes. Yeah. From New York to Nairobi. Yeah. But, but you've been in and out for quite a while, like you told yes, me. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, we mentioned off air that mm -hmm. uh, uh, my wife is from Kenya. Right. And for the better part of a decade, we've been coming here regularly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, just to make a distinction, I'm from New Jersey. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my whole career has been in, New, been York in City. New York. Yeah. Uh, and that's why you're talking about it uh, from a professional point of view. Mm -hmm. Career wise, you've been really uh, into real estate. Yes. What piqued your interest uh, growing up that, okay, this is a space I want to be in? Uh, and grow my profession there. You know, it, it found me. Uh, uh -huh. I'm, it, my dad is an architect, so I right. grew up uh, just looking at his buildings around Manhattan. He's, uh -huh. he's designed uh, many buildings around Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, and New mm -hmm. Jersey. And uh, in the formative years, you know, in such a bustling city, having someone, my own father, create mm -hmm. these, these uh, mammoth, uh, monolith-type buildings, right. it was just, I, I was hooked from, from day one. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I got older, you know, after undergrad, and I just wanted to be, how could I be down? Right. So I found any possible way into the business, and it grew from there. Right. And for you, you know, it's one thing to look at the business from the outside, and then once you get in, you realize, uh oh, uh oh, this is not <laughs> what I wanted to do. That's a Where's the emergency very astute button? Uh, way to hit quit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, you know, the moment you consider yourself an insider, you've failed. Mm -hmm. If you stay, outside as if you don't know anything and treat everything a a as a learning process. Right. You can control risk, you can uh, uh, come out on top with, with relati you know, relatively all your body parts intact. <laughs> uh, as soon as you consider yourself an insider, you, you start to lose your edge, Right. in my opinion. Right. And, and for you, where did this start from uh, university? Where did you go to next? What After university, I, oh, I went to work straight for different developers, mm -hmm. uh, mostly in New Jersey uh, with new some New York uh, projects. And I was the uh, every man. You know, if they needed a permit, I got it. If they needed right. public financing, I got it. Private um, programming, that's something, uh, how many units and, and what type of use uh, does, does a developer really want? Right. That's the architect's job for sure and engineer's job. But uh, inter you know, extrapolating from an architect and a developer and, and pushing forward with the project is something I was very right. excited to do. So you are the go-to guy when it comes to financing, orchestrating, and you know, putting the deals in place. And it was a, was you a know, call, uh, call to me. I guess that's a great way to say it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in, uh, in that particular time in space, because um, your career spans, you know, a, a couple of decades. Sure. When you look at it. Yeah. Um, you've experienced the highs and the lows, uh, a no couple question. of serious yes. lows as well. Uh, when you look at housing markets in general, because sure. it's something very many people talk about, um, you know, the property, uh, you know, bubble busting. Sure. You know, you've seen it before. Seen you've it. You've experienced it Felt before. Felt it. How do you safeguard yourself? And when it happens, do you think, okay, probably it's time I take my skill set and probably go to Silicon Valley, where the tech is, and start something new? Did that ever cross your mind? Yeah, it did. And I do have background in some, uh, you know, tech-enabled real estate plays. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, you do have to stay flexible. And you know, I have, if any advice I can give, to I assume you mean uh, uh, someone who's buying real estate, right? Uh, and not necessarily in the industry, right. how to safeguard from housing bubbles. I mean, it's, it's, it can be simple as, as just don't borrow, mm -hmm. you know, because if you borrow, then someone has leverage over, no pun intended, leverage over you, you know, for the rest of your life, for the life of the loan. And if your interest rate changes and you can't afford that payment, you're screwed. Right. So I'd say the best safeguards are data, you know, constantly educating yourself, constantly uh, taking the temperature of the market, on a regular basis, daily, weekly, right. and you know, never getting comfortable. Right. And the moment you're comfortable, like I said, uh, the moment you feel like an insider, uh, your risk grows dramatically. Right. Right. So stay, stay, stay woke, uh, <laughs> stay afraid, you know, and and be vigilant of, of where your money is going and how it's, uh, right. you know, what 
encumbrances might be on it. Right. And let's talk about educating yourself because that's one way to stay at the top of your game. You know, if you're a sports person, you're always on the pitch, yeah. you're always playing. Yeah. For you, how do you make sure your skill is sharp? You know, after 20 years in it, some people might look back and say, yeah, I've, I've kind of seen it all right now. I have the networks in place. I know how uh, the fundamentals of a deal look like. What do you do to stay top of your game? Well, you know, the mo again, the moment you say that, you're, you're in trouble. You know, you have to stay on top of uh, real estate news. You have to open your eyes out in the, in the world, you know. It, whatever you eat, uh, whenever we get sick, we put our heads down, and all in pieces of real estate. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep your eyes and ears open what's physically happening around you. If, if you saw a store that was open for 10 years, 15, 20 years, all of a sudden it shuts down and it's in, the, it's in a major corner, mm -hmm. that should tell you something. Right. If none of the hotels are, are uh, 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 none of the lights are on at night, in mm -hmm. any hotel you see in a certain neighborhood, that should tell you something. So, you know, we shouldn't really rely on, you know, what articles might be saying or the news might be saying. You mm -hmm. know, you have to sort of draw conclusions for yourself based on the world around you. Right. So, you know. That's what I would say. And even that. as you're doing that, you said uh, you went from real estate, jumped into the tech space for a bit, and merged that with real estate. Let's talk about that. What, sure. What drove you to that? Uh, what aspect? drove me to that? So it's actually similar to what uh, informed the decision to move here, is mm -hmm. that uh, in New York and New Jersey, the, the returns were just getting slimmer and slimmer, but the risk profile wasn't getting smaller and smaller, commensurate mm -hmm. with the uh, uh, slimmer uh, returns. So you know, there's a lot of activity uh, in New York and Silicon Valley that are trying to do tech-enabled uh, uh, technologies or, or technologies to to make more money in real estate, to make the experience of real estate easier and and uh, more user-friendly. So that interested me a lot because uh, relying on fundamentals wasn't you know wasn't where the industry was going. There was a lot of money and a lot of activity going towards tech enablement of real estate. So mm -hmm. that attracted me. Right. So. And you saw that was the best way to go and just get in while the market was still... It was my way to go. I'm right. not going to tell anybody what the best <laughs> way is, but it was certainly my way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just taking it back a bit, uh, in university, co-curricular activities. Were you a sports guy? What were you playing at uh, the time? Let's Do see. you still play? I, okay, so I try and play ice hockey, but in Nairobi it's a, it's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> but to stay in shape and to, to stay active, I, I, I box as much as I can and right. uh, try and get some sparring in. And, Staying in shape that way. Right. Um, outside of that, it's really hard to find time outside of the family mm -hmm. to really to really do anything. And because, uh, like you've spoken about it, um, with uh, that particular line of business, it's more than a 24-hour job. You're going shopping somewhere, and as they shop for stuff, you're yeah, looking around, you have looking to at properties. Yes. How, how do you balance that uh, particular aspect in terms of this um, is work, this is when it's family time. We don't mix the two. We don't. It's, I find it really easy to balance, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. You know, I love my kids and being around my wife and kids so much that, you know, it's easy to shut it off. Right. But, you know, I also try and get them interested in it. To, mm -hmm. you know, if I just turn into that real estate robot <laughs> around them, I, I, I involve them because mm -hmm. I don't want them seeing their dad <laughs> <laughs> going into some weird uh, uh, mental state about real estate and right. not involve them. Right. So my trick would be to involve them, get them excited, make it a teaching moment, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, that's how I would, the best way I, I can manage right. integrating the both. And something interesting you said is that you're a New Jersey boy, you married an Arubi girl. I did. How did that happen? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, was, it was an amazing journey. Uh, she was in New York, She's, she loves New York and, you know, uh, we're both quintessential New Yorkers mm -hmm. in as much as we love the lifestyle, we love the spirit of New York, and I grew up there, so around there in my backyard. Mm -hmm. So uh, she moved there. She lived there for a decade, and we met. And you know, it just shows no matter no matter where you come from, you can right. have so much in common because right. uh, our outlook on life is is very very similar, mm -hmm. and we share a lot of the same type of uh, engagement with people and how we want to spend our time and our lives. Right. And it's interesting because I'm sure after that she said, come on home, uh, meet the family, come to Nairobi. She said it right after, but it took her eight <laughs> years to get To convince here. you to come? Yeah, yeah. And how was it the first time uh, you came to Nairobi? The first time? Uh -huh. Oh, man. It was a, a dream. We went on safari. We went to Mombasa. And my first time on safari, I remember, <laughs> we were in the truck and this lion just did one of these just looked over at us and started <laughs> walking towards us, just, look, you know, just padding over to us. I'm like, babe, 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 babe. <laughs> it's coming. She's like, Look. relax, man. It's fine. <laughs> We're in the truck. He, 
he doesn't know, he's not threatening us. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and then I, sla I got over it and I realized how the calming nature of, of going on safari was. And it was just, it changed my life, right. really. Right. And then we went to Mombasa and it was, you know, I grew up on the Jersey Shore with mm -hmm. the Jersey Shore. So right. it's a different, uh, much different experience. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And I'm sure uh, once uh, you went back to New York, did you think you're back to this hustle and bustle, the pace of the city, can't wait to go back to uh, Kenya? Have some R&R, &R, was that? I, no, mm -hmm. not, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things I had to sort of compartmentalize. Right. Uh, because, you know, we, we grew our investments here, we grew our uh, time here. So mm -hmm. it was, it was a compar more of a compartmentalization, right. I would say. I wasn't, right. New York wasn't always on my mind in Kenya and, and, and vice versa. versa. Uh -huh. it, it would hop in and out, but I didn't mm -hmm. like have this, you know, mm -hmm. Okay. Obsession to get back to that relaxation, right. you know. Right. And what made you realize, okay, fine, probably now, time is right, let's go set up uh, in Nairobi, let me make it full time and see sure. what, what comes out of that. Well, our kids are young, mm -hmm. you know, they're two and four, and before they can establish, you know, lifelong friendships and lifelong relationships, it's a, it's, a, it's a more nimble time in your life. I don't know if you have kids. Do you have kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, how old are they? Uh, one and a half. One, oh, mm -hmm. baby. You're, you're <laughs> in the mix, aren't you? Uh, it's a fun time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, while they're young, we, we could stay nimble, mm -hmm. and Nairobi's been in our, our, our conversation regularly, and because, you know, again, the margins were getting slimmer and slimmer in New York and New Jersey, and our time margin was getting slimmer and slimmer. You know, right. we had to chase after the kids mm -hmm. and do the housework and manage uh, social life and do, do all these things just with our own two hands. So we wanted to, you know, take, take, you know, try and take, an ad take advantage of a different lifestyle here that might afford us more quality time with ourselves right. and with our jobs. Right. You know? And especially with family, uh, when you make such a move, it really needs to be a very well calculated risk. So Absolutely. you're in New York, you have your thing going on. Sure. It's, it's a hustle, you know, mm. there's no time, but it is working. So when you looked at Nairobi, sure. how did you look at and identify an opportunity that would work for you professionally, but also make sure you have uh, time for That's family? That's a great question. I mean, we came here a couple of times to uh, ascertain the ascertain that same risk both mm -hmm. on home uh, schools and jobs mm -hmm. and we wanted something with challenge uh, on the job front something with upside where we're not just showing up and you know getting paid and going home we, we wanted to work towards some upside mm -hmm. uh, schools we wanted uh, you know culturally the, the the type of education that we've seen in the Montessori uh, world uh, right. that, that we see at home the sort of building students up and we, we saw some of that here and mm -hmm. we're pretty happy with our choices and uh, homes you know <laughs> we lived in Jersey City and it was very urban and everything right at your fingertips it was wonderful beautiful real estate and you know we were staring down the barrel of 20 years in the Jersey suburbs or even Long Island suburbs maybe and uh, it's like okay wait if we're gonna go to the suburbs we might as well try something really new right and you know, we moved to a beautiful part of town here in Nairobi. We have trees everywhere, the greenery. It's exactly what we sought after for, for our home. Right. And you have a couple of pictures. Before we talk about uh, the 88 Nairobi that everybody's talking about, uh, we'll now God. have them up. There Look he at is. That. Look at that young tuck. <laughs> keeping it. I'm keeping it real. Look, uh, at, that. The crown. Look at that face. <laughs> yeah. My brother drew that uh, uh, cake behind me. You know, for a happy birthday, you really have a serious face. What was going on You know, on I here? had to stay, yeah? stay Stay real. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm watching my brother do something. Oh, that's me on the drums. Right, right. I forgot uh, I gave it. Was this a band or just uh, one so of the performance? Shout out to my, some of my best friends, Saul Slotnick and Jamie DeTringo. Uh -huh. And I'm on the drums there. And we, right. did, a, <laughs> we did a Led Zeppelin medley uh, for a charity, uh, right. charity concert in my high school. Uh -huh. And when was the last time you actually jammed as a band? Uh, that time? It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Maybe as a trio like that. Yeah. Maybe 2008, Whoa. 2009, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Things got hairy, but you know, <laughs> credit, much credit to Saul and Jamie too, because uh, they kept strapping it on, they're playing right. shows everywhere. So right, I'm right. Proud of them. Okay, and let's talk about uh, your new role as CEO at sure. Lordship Africa and the monumental project that's sure. underway. First of all, how, how far is it? How is it looking? What are the timelines on 88 Nairobi? So we are just finishing up Earthwork now, mm -hmm. and we had some surprise, geotechnical su uh, surprises uh, along the way. And, you know, we're our over under for completing the project once we start uh, concrete construction is 36 months. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, I can't take a blood oath uh, <laughs> by the month on exactly when it will right. end because there's always surprises in real estate. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that's a bit of uh, 
opacity in real estate that you know people don't really know about is you know every project's totally different, and right. the challenges that come up have uh, you have to budget time to solve, and every developer has these issues of of, of surprises along the way. Right. So you know, thirty six months is the over under on when we can complete right. and and uh, also because um, I mean business environments different uh, yes it is. talking about doing real estate in New York versus sure. uh, Nairobi sure. how was it you know learning the the laws learning the people to talk to sure how it works how, how did that work for you um, it's still working mm -hmm. you know I, I I don't like leading new ventures with uh, hubris mm -hmm. I like just leading with learning as much as I can right. and not being a jerk about it or mm -hmm. trying not to be. <laughs> I can't control every time I'm a jerk. Uh -huh. But uh, in New York, there's a lot, a great deal of transparency. And, but even with that transparency, it took me 15 years to understand really how New York works. And I'm still learning. Right. You know? I have no crystal ball. Mm -hmm. And I'm just doing the same process here in Nairobi, taking the fundamentals of what I learned back there in a really high octane uh, petrol, uh, high octane <laughs> petrol <laughs> environment where you know everything's most everything is very transparent and everyone gets straight to the point and you don't need a lot of uh, uh, people or inter intermediaries to get to a deal or get to a situation or, or a, a bit of uh, uh, arbitrage or advantage. Mm -hmm. Here you need you need you need people a lot more. Right. So engaging with uh, people to to have mutual exchange of of, of ideas and and growth together. Right. Is is something I'm I'm very happy to learn uh, the skill of doing here. Right, right. And let's talk about um, uh, your leadership style as well. Hmm. Uh, being the CEO Thank of you. Lordship Africa, what do you think your leadership style is? If you are asked, if, if you walk out of the asked, room and they're like, "Okay, Anuj is," what's your leadership I, style? I'm not. I, I really don't like instilling fear. I really don't like. Uh, I want people to be empowered and happy with what they're doing. Uh, and get to know me as someone who can open doors for them instead of closing on them if they don't do exactly mm -hmm. what I tell them. Mm -hmm. You know, I love empowerment. Uh, I love working with people, men and women, that just, you know, if they don't know how to empower themselves, they maybe ask me how to do mm -hmm. it or just take good advice and give good advice. Right. You know, right. so I like having a, an exchange with the people I'm working with. Right. So I'd say in, in a short in a nutshell, right. uh, my leadership style is we grow together right. and uh, follow my uh, uh, influence, mm -hmm. and I welcome your influence. Right. And even as you talk about um, that leadership of Lordship Africa, of course, uh, there's that flagship project of uh, the 88 Nairobi um, that will have some of those uh, architectural renders up on screen that you can see. Mm -hmm. And even as we, we have those, there, uh, there you go, <laughs> there you are right there. What, what's it going to be like? Is it residences? Is it offices? Because so, there's a lot of speculation on what's going on here. Okay, so mm -hmm. I can simplify. Mm -hmm. uh, the bottom here is what we call a podium. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, okay, so it's parking. It's a uh, very large restaurant area, a flex retail space where we, we're still chewing on what we want to do. It's right. uh, either spa or, mm -hmm. you know, what's the highest and best use. We're going to decide that very soon. Mm -hmm. And we have common co-working areas, uh, our lobby, you know, that's, Th that's the podium area. Right. And then the first uh, row of apartments there are, um, uh, c they're not hotel rooms, but they're, they're apartments that the residents can use and rent out for family members that are visiting. Right. And then if you see that cantile cantilever, cantilever means something that's sticking out like right. this, right. like a balcony is a cantilever. Oh, so uh, right there. So that middle, yeah. Uh -huh, right in the middle. Everything oh. below that is a furnished, uh, it's called an executive apartment, mm -hmm. a furnished and serviced apartment. Right. And above that, uh, there's a little bit more choice where we're not going to furnish it for you and you install your taste and, and the environment you want to put right. in there. Right. And uh, above that are duplexes and penthouses, which are just giant, luxurious uh, 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 apartments full of space and uh -huh. it's really lovely. How many floors? Uh, 44. 44 floors. Yeah. So then someone who have uh, a penthouse on the 44th floor, tallest point in Africa. Well, you know, I think <laughs> that's, uh, everyone's building all over the continent. Right. So it's the t it's tallest sub-Saharan uh, luxury residential building. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I will say you don't have to be on the 44th floor to enjoy it because our first apartment is still uh, no pun intended, towering over the neighboring right. uh, uh, property. So you still have unfettered views, uh, even at the first floor of apartments. Right. Yeah. And with, with such projects happening, and with what you've been doing in terms of, like you said, in New York, breakneck speeds in terms of putting deals together and the pace of business, what excites you now? You know, when you wake up in the morning, what gets your blood, you know, rushing? So the, the, the ability to roll my sleeves up without the 
200 years of, <laughs> of ac accumulated laws and, and, and business practices in, in New York where, you know, that's why it's so expensive because your risk is dramatically mitigated by very extremely to the inch and to mm -hmm. the millimeter uh, written laws. And here, you know, you have a lot more creativity in what you want to build because, you know, every location is different. You can, you know, negotiate different terms of use and, you know, get zoning, you know, activity uh, a little a little differently than, than how it's written by the book right. uh, uh, back at home. Right. So that's that the ability to roll your sleeves up and be creative with real estate mm -hmm. is, is what's attractive. There's a lot more space on the canvas for you to paint on. It's a different canvas. Right. It's a different angle, it's a different paint, right. but ultimately we're creating a painting, mm -hmm. right? So it, it's a different canvas, different room, different paint, different paintbrush, but ultimately the output will be a beautiful painting. And you know, interestingly, because um, with experience, most people will look at uh, your CV and it just seems like success uh, on success on success. Usually the failures aren't talked about, the times when you went in on a deal and you're like, oh, you this know, one gutted I, me, I may not get I myself up I wish people talked about failure more. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Sure. Uh -huh. you know, uh, if, because you're not, if you're not failing, you're not growing. Right. Uh, let's talk about some of the moments where you felt like this probably was the wrong move. You're out of uh, the deal. You're out of business. Sure. How, and how you got yourself up, uh, back up from that. I could talk point. about two of them. Mm -hmm. And one was in my control. One was out of my control. Right. And I could tell you about the outcomes of both. Uh, when I became a commercial broker uh, in New York, it was a super New York-y, hustly uh, real estate company. And I, I still look back really fondly on my time there. Um, it's called Eastern Consolidated. And it was a deal on 8th Avenue. Oh, it was actually right around uh, the corner from a building my dad designed. And uh, I won't name names or anything, but uh, I, I originated a buyer for this building. And it was an institutional buyer. And it was about a, a close to a $100 million deal. And uh, they were so excited. They were underwriting it. They got a team on it. And they were focused on it. And they wanted to, they wanted to deal. And the seller was interested at that price, and it was, you know, the, it was, it was, good, it was going to happen. I was, you know, mm -hmm. and but I was coming off grad school. I was paying off grad school debt. I was uh, living with my parents, and it, it was, it, it would just, it would have gotten me out of a, 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 a tough situation. Very right. tough is the wrong word. It was, it was, I was fine, mm -hmm. but a, a, a less than desirable situation at the time. And last minute, you know, I hear from their investment committee that, oh, the building's too old. We're not going to do it, and it just crushed me you know it was the first deal I brought to the table at this company and it absolutely destroyed me for months it took me I still have uh -huh. I still can't pass by without gr grimacing <laughs> grimacing at the building but it turns out to be one of the best things to ever happen to me in, in my career which is and the lesson was kill your darlings right you know if you are just so obsessed with one deal happening or one a uh, piece of activity that you just want to convert so badly and it doesn't happen, you know, that muscle memory of killing your darling can really help you in the future because you can realize that you're, you're more than that deal. Right. And you, it's you that was the value, not the deal. Right. You know? So if I can do it once, I could do it again. Right. And I did. Okay, fantastic stuff. And uh, as far as our conversation is concerned, that's where we'll draw the curtains, of course, Mr. Anuj Kiel, the CEO of Lordship Africa. He said they're still doing the groundwork, but in 36 months, my friend, all the way to the top, it's going to be an amazing experience from right the there. beginning. From the beginning of construction. <laughs> yes, no blood oath hey, taken right here. Thanks my for man. having me, man. Thank you so much for coming through. And right all the best to that. Thank you very Regards much. to the family as well. Thank you. Yours okay. as well. Okay, fantastic stuff. Of course, up close and personal with the CEO of Lordship Africa, Mr. Anuj Kiel, talking about his journey. And of course, now that he's here, uh, new canvas, new paints, new uh, drawings to be made, new art to be made. And that, of course, is going to happen all courtesy of Lordship Africa. We take a short break. Back on the other side as we talk about contraceptives and their effects. This is K24 This Morning.